Hey, boss. I came as soon as I got your message. Sit down, Tom. We have a mole, Tom. No. Who? Oh. I was up all night driving myself nuts trying to figure it out. I started thinking maybe it's one of our guys. We aren't paying his fair share. Someone with a light wallet. Maybe looking to Morello for a new suit. Frank wasn't around, so I went to the safe to get the account books to see who's getting cents on the dollar he's earned. What do you know? The books are gone, Tom. Frank. <sighs> More than 50 years I've known him. <sighs> Everything I have, I got with Frank. And every buck we've earned, every dime we've paid out, it's all logged in those books. Frank hands those over to the feds, we're finished. Frank respects one person in this whole town, and that's you. This has got to be some kind of misunderstanding. I've been calling him all day. I went by his place. He's gone. His wife and kid are gone. But why? I don't know. I'm sure he has his reasons. Maybe he's still smarting over the dog. But when you tried to drown? Yeah. <sighs> Same one I shot after he wouldn't let me sink her. I was a stupid kid, Tommy. But grudge or no grudge, we gotta get those books back. Shake down all our stories. See who knows what. When you catch up to Frank, you get those books. And if he doesn't have them on him, you make him tell you where to find them. After that, you do what we gotta do. Vincenzo's waiting for you with a clean car. Tough day today, Tom. We gotta keep a lid on this, Tom. Start with Biff, but don't give him nothing. I got your clean set of wheels. And something special here, if you want it. When Frank sees a Lapara, you'll know. The old ways work. I didn't see this coming now from Frank. And now for the latest news. The Navy is today continuing its search for the remains of those brave souls lost aboard the airship USS Akron. The Akron was destroyed in a violent thunderstorm off the New Jersey coast Tuesday morning with the loss of 73 of 76 aboard. The disaster stands as the worst aviation accident on record. Yesterday, one of the survivors, Lieutenant Commander Herbert B. Wiley, spoke to members of the press and gave a brief account of the tragedy. He also spoke of the survivor's rescue by the German tanker. Tom, 
me. What's the rumpus? Heard any big news lately? Something the Don might want to know. Uh, depends. <laughs> What's it worth to you? Twenty bucks. How about forty? All right, spill. The FBI is in town. They're getting something from Morello, but I, I don't know what. How'd you hear? Little Tony got some guy drunk in the Black Cat and drove him home. Heard a bunch of stuff, so he's the guy you want to see. Okay. Thanks. Always a pleasure, Tommy. Welcome to a WLH Sports Report. There's a sense of anticipation as we await the start of the big game. Our very own Lost Heaven Lancers are out on the road, deep in enemy territory as they take on bitter rivals, the Empire Bay Cannons. This year's Gold Series is shaping up to be one of the best on record, with both teams matching one another blow for blow. Despite the Cannons' home field advantage and an early lead in the series, the Lancers have bounced back and have really taken their rivals to task. Many of the plaudits and column inches have been dedicated to one man. Lancers pitcher Bunny Smith is one of this year's standout performers. And with this series tied at 3-3, three to three, he may well be the key man that brings the Wisman Trophy back to last heaven. But doing so will be no easy task, as standing he is when he is opposition captain, Marquardt, Jack Seidel. His solo home run in the bottom of the fifth inning of Game 5 turned events in favor of the Empire Bay team. Victory was canceled out by the Lancers in Game 6, and we now have a powder keg finale that is sure to have everyone glued to their radios. Can Bunny Smith bring it home for Lost Heaven? Or will the Cannon's towering redhead have the final say? WLH 570 Lost Heaven Radio will carry live coverage of the final game of the Gold Series, and we hope you'll join us in wishing our boys well. And now, back to some of the latest musical numbers. <laughs> Everything okay, Tom? No, it's not. What's this about the guy you drove home who's with the feds? He came in for a drink, which turned into ten. He's hired muscle for some kind of safe house. Where? Oak Hill, corner of Pine. He gave me ten bucks to drive him back and keep my mouth shut. Let on that Councilor Gilatis brokered some kind of deal between Morello and the FBI. They were all ready to sit tight on someone in there. Why the hell didn't you tell us? Tom, I did. I came in to see Frank straight away. He didn't tell the Don? No. No, he didn't. Tom? What's going on? now to the coverage of Game 7 of the Gold Series. And by the looks of it, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be underway any minute now. The crowd here in the armory are restless. You can almost taste the tension as we approach this, the deciding game between these two famous rivals. More than a little bad blood between them and more than a couple of nasty flare-ups in recent years. Of course, this occasion more than any other could prove feisty, what with the drama that closed out the previous game. That, of course, saw the Lancers win to tie the series, and it's not often Empire Bay and Lost Heaven can boast the game's best covering hitter and pitcher, respectively. I refer, of course, to Foghorn Seidel, a man mountain with a shock of red hair, and Lancer star Bunny Smith. Speaking of Smith, he is jogging, I suppose you'd say, between his teammates, issuing last-minute orders. They seem responsive to whatever he's saying. He commands respect from his team, that is for sure. My goodness, there must be some nerves among some of the younger Lancers, Elms, Graveson, and Nicholson. 
Portsmouth seem to have pepped them up. That's good to see. That's what a good captain does. The cannons lineup is meandering over to the home team dugout. The Lancers are slowly taking up their position so we can't be too far away from the opening pitch here at the Armour, the home of the Empire Bay Cannons. Stay with us for more. <laughs> Looks like the place. Take me to those account books, Frank. And we return now to cover what could be the final play of this game and the series between the Lost Heaven Lancers and the Empire Bay Cannons. A quick reminder that this final inning is being brought to you by Swift Cola. When you need a lift, reach for a Swift. It's not only a taste sensation, it's guaranteed to increase focus, drive, and mental clarity. Pick up a bottle of Swift Cola today. And as we are coming to a close, let me thank today's other sponsors, Big Break Cigarettes and Lost Heaven Courier. Both of these teams could be said to be entering golden eras. Each team has a star player. They're at the core with promising youngsters set around them. I refer, of course, to Smith and Seidel. The Cannons have had several such golden periods. The Lancers, it's fair to say, have not. I can see Lancers manager Frankie Hodge prowling in front of the dugout, gesticulating. He seems animated, to say the least. Looks like he's putting one of the officials in his place or something or other. With the noise of the crowd, it is quite hard to say for sure. Whatever's going on down there, you can feel the sense of occasion, and you just know that whatever happens, the crowd will be the first to tell you what has happened. The Lancers are now within minutes of snatching the gold series, which at one stage had appeared doomed, but they equally teeter on the edge of defeat. It all comes down to the final play. Nobody is warming up in the bullpen. Nobody down there is considering the possibility of extra innings. Bunny Smith then standing on the mound, some a look kind of, of meat steel happening. determination on his face. He's betraying no emotion, doesn't look nervous or tired after his exertions this series, nor does he appear to be carrying the weight of expectation. He's having a word with the umpire about something or other. What a strapping fellow. 6'2, 195 pounds. If the Lancers are to win here today, he's going to rock himself into the record books. And boy, oh boy, what that would mean to the people of Lost Heaven after such a long time without glory on the diamond. All right, they've sorted out whatever was going on. Here we go then. In for the cannons, it's Patty Doherty. Smith is pitching the game of his life, but Doherty's a big man. If he can catch one, it could run, and with bases loaded, the cannons would have it. Here we go. Doherty facing down Smith. Pass ball and strike. The big man thought he had it. Some speed on that ball. My goodness. It's fair to say Doherty looks a little spooked. He was convinced he had it. His body language tells the tale. Smith remains cool under pressure, not a flicker of emotion on his face. Ah, uh, shit. They've taken you to the airport, Frank. Sip on that 
on good law. Seidel is barking something at Doherty, but we have no chance of hearing it as the noise of the crowd reaches fever pitch. Doherty's gesturing, and that's only making Seidel more irate. This is it, folks. Another strike, and the Lancers win. If Doherty can get behind it, surely the Cannons will get all their men home and snatch victory. A swing and a miss, and that's the winners! Lancers win! Lancers win! And Smith finally cracks an elated smile. He's thrown his cap in the air, as have his teammates. Lancers win the 1933 Gold Series! Scheduled music programs and regular news bulletins brought to you by Lost Heaven Radio. There's a reason the racers of the Lost Heaven Grand Prix use only Trago motor oil, and that's because only Trago makes engines perform at their maximum while guarding against wear and tear. For optimal performance, Trago lets you go, go, go. They're flying him out of state or something. Fuck, this ain't good. Flown out. Oh, they're handing him over to who? 
those men with the plane looked like gangsters. How long till they're done? I'm due to fly. Soon as they fly their prisoner out, I guess. I don't know. A lot of these press. men don't look like cops. What in the name of Jesus Christ is he doing now? Who's this lug train impress? so far. Let's get it done quietly and go home. They told me nothing. the same thing. I can't say I'm happy dealing with these people. Morello hasn't the honor to even show his face. Oh, for a rat like you? Nah. Get in the car. So what happens next? Once Morello gives us the books, our accounting guys go through them. We'll oh, find who knows it. Home. Yeah, but... Won't Salieri's guys fly the coop before we're done? That's why we'll round them up. Any charges on them that we know won't stick, but it keeps them in cells long enough for the scales to tip. This is gonna be some day in court. Tax evasion, money laundering, corruption.
I hand over Coletti, Torello makes him disappear in his plane. The dame goes to bring Salieri to his knees. is waiting for Coletti in one of the hangars. Tom. Frank, the Don sent me. I figured as much. I'm sorry it had to be you, Tommy. Anything you want me to tell him? I wish it could have shaken out better, but Morello finally came after me. It's okay. You can come out. Morello offered me a simple trade. The Don's account books for our lives and tickets out of this town. You hand the books over yet? I'm not so stupid, Don. They're safe. Morello was waiting for this. It's a key to a box in the Grand Imperial Bank downtown. I told Morello I'd hand it over after the plane was fueled and ready to go. His men were meant to fetch it before we left. I took care of him. Tell them to get on a plane. Go on, March. Alice, get aboard. Frank, you're coming with us. Not right now, honey. Just get buckled in. Tommy and I, we have some serious business to discuss. But Frank... Get on the plane, March! For Alice. For me. Get on the goddamn plane. Please.
You been paid yet? Yeah. Now you've been paid twice. You take the ladies wherever they want to go. Yes, sir. Thank you, Tom. Christ, Frank. Why didn't you ask us for help? I guess I just wanted out. One way or the other. I'm tired, Tommy. Tired of lying to my wife. Tired of checking under my car every time I take a Sunday drive. And tired of waiting for the dawn to put two in my temple. God damn you, Frank. Good afternoon, sir. Where's the safety deposit boxes? With my colleague downstairs, sir. Thanks. Beautiful day, huh? Uh-huh. Keeping out of trouble, I hope. I need to access the deposit boxes for Frank Coletti. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Angelo? Uh, yeah. Mr. Coletti said it might be you who came and to provide access. Please, follow me. Got the books and covered my tracks. Salieri never asked any questions. In fact, apart from the funeral, I never heard him talk about Frank again. Making my boys twitchy, Marku. Sergio and I just came by to pay respects, that's all. Known Frank a long time. 
almost as long as you. He's a good man. Smart. Loyal. <laughs> Loyal to his wife. His kid above all else. There must be some kind of honor in that in you. Maybe. But I'm still looking at this headstone with his little girl's name on it. Yeah. It's a hell of a thing. <laughs>